Okay, so we're on to episode two, which I'm shooting this on Thursday, so the episode ended about 11 hours ago, and I haven't slept yet, so excuse me if I look like shit, but to go into it, um, this episode is the principle of restricted choice, um, which I'm, I'm hoping that fits in the title war. Um, so, I was a little concerned at the start that we were maybe just a bit too shaky and off to maybe kind of a slow start, and going into this one, I kind of felt the same for a little bit. Um, I, I talked about before, I did want to make sure to give it time to build and not just automatically assume it's just going to be a slow season. So, starting off, um, we do get some more... Um, we're still not quite... One of the things I am really interested to see the most, probably because it's so far kind of been the least we've gotten, is um, what exactly they're going to do with Carrie Coon's character, who is like our our main cop protagonist, and we still got, like, we've introduced, um, the character played by Shea Wiggum now, and we're still kind of getting that, uh, kind of replicating the feel of the cops from the original movie, um, and thus through the other seasons, which is probably one of the easier things to evoke when you're kind of going for that feel. <laughs> Um, a, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like a low-hanging fruit thing or anything, but it's just, they seem like the easiest target to put the accents in there and the quirky characters and all that. So they seem to be having fun with that, which is great. Um, and this ongoing story with, um, Ray and Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character, um, I do kind of like this whole, uh, femme fatale thing that she's doing, and I do think... She's definitely a character that I'm intrigued by when she's there, because while there are some moments with her that still don't completely ring true for me, um, I feel like down the road she's just going to become really, really unpredictable. And that's not necessarily to give credit to the scene um, that quite... I mean, I can, I can understand it getting a big reaction, but I actually kind of thought it was a bit kind of easy shock value when she hinted at Ray that it was the time where she was going through something and was able to leave Emmett a gruesome message. Um, <laughs> I kind of thought that was a bit, you know, I, I, I guess overkill, I don't know. But it's, it is certainly something to show that her character's not fucking around, but at the same time, I did feel like it was a bit kind of easy shock value type stuff. But still, um, the thing that I do really find intriguing the most about her character is... The way we watch this really good scene between Emma and Ray, where we get to watch both humans going to work. Um, and it, throughout this scene, we realize that we're not, we're not sure if this is actually a very sincere brother moment, or if it's one playing the other. Because we know he's there, he's initially there to distract him while Mary Elizabeth Winstead's up there trying to find the stamp and all that. But the thing is, is, um,. We're not quite sure, because Ray seems to feel like he had a sincere moment until she's telling him that, oh no, he's just trying to play you while we're trying to play him. And the reason I love that so much is the new thing we've kind of added here, where in the first episode, if I remember, um, Michael Stuhlberg's character was just kind of there as to be like, um, like Emmett's partner, and he was just kind of a character there on the side and had that just really went right into the whole Coen Brothers type character. Um, really going at it with the accent, too. But now it seems to be that it is... They're both kind of pawns, and it's more or less, like, indirectly, unintentionally, the story is Mary Elizabeth Winstead versus Michael Stuhlbar, when it looks like at the center, it's Ray and Emmett going at it. But really, Ray and Emmett are like, Rock'em Sock'em robots that have Mary Elizabeth Winstead on one side and Michael Stuhlberg on the other. Um, so I really like that development, and I'm really curious to see how that goes. I'm really concerned, um, because it was really, because like I said, I was concerned about for the first half of this episode, but then it got really good. <laughs> it got really good in the second half. Um, particularly between the, uh, the because the scenes between Ewan McGregor playing Emmett 
with Michael Stuhlbarg are really good. The scenes of you and McGregor playing Ray with Michael Stuhlbarg are even better. <laughs> Um, and I would I would love to get more scenes between the two of them. I really would. But I was kind of looking at the credits as it ended, and I was starting... Something hadn't really occurred to me yet um, that kind of concerns me, and that is I'm a little afraid they're going to, like, kill Stuhlbarg too early. Because he's... He, like, in the advertisements, he was listed as one of the main cast, but in actuality, he's not one of the main cast. Like, the main cast are... Um, what is it? It's McGregor, Carrico, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and David Thewlis, I think, are the extent of the the full cast. I might be missing one, but they're the ones that are the front and center, and then the rest are the guest stars. Um, I'm, I'm hoping he lasts a while, uh, because I really love that banter. Even the whole, it's almost like it gets a bit infantile when they're just flipping each other off, but the way it's done is just hilarious. Um, I really, really love that scene, and the whole... When he tries, when he backs into the car, and then when he tries to drive away, he's, he almost, I, I kind of thought we were going to lose him then, and he was going to lose control and something quite darkly comedic was going to happen, but he just drove away, which is good, because it means he's still with us. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be, like, worried now, like, every episode that we're going to lose him, because I really want that to go on. Um, I also love that moment with him where this is like the Stuhlbarg praise hour. Uh, <laughs> when uh, he and Emmett are kind of trying to contemplate the situation and how he just immediately jumps to slave girls when Emmett's thinking like drug dealers. <laughs> um, some, decent, some decent dialogue in this one where I thought uh, the first episode was a bit shaky and maybe a little, a little trying too hard to kind of reach that Coen Brothers dialogue. Like, um, uh, Mary Elizabeth wants us line about unfathomable pinhead over here, or whatever it was. Um, it does kind of fit it. I did love the whole moment when, um, what is it that Emmett says? Uh, we should be able to Facebook this cocksucker, no, no, friend this cocksucker on Facebook and reel him in. Um, so yes, um, so that, I felt like that was stronger this time around. Um, and sure, I, I'm hoping we'll get stronger as it goes. Um, and we'll kind of leave... The, there's really... It, the first episode is not bad at all, but I'm really hoping we can, you know, just keep building and building and get better and ultimately more or less leave episode one in the dust because we just get that good later. That would be ideal. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, as I was talking about, uh, very happy that we get more David Thule's greatness. I love that he is so... He's such a threatening character, especially in that very last scene. But the thing is, is even though we should feel really intimidated by him, he we can. It's more so that we just acknowledge that he's an intimidating, intimidating character, and whereas we as an audience can't necessarily see him that way because he's just too entertaining. That's not. That's not even a criticism. That's that's a good thing. I love that he's too entertaining because <laughs> um, he, he's just eating this role alive and I love it. and he's still just he just pops up in these little tiny doses um, but it, it's just perfect and I real I was really happy because at first I thought once again we were gonna lose him early kind of in kind of in a similar way we um, they killed off Brad Garrett in the second season um, but the fact that he's like part of the main cast um, I, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be in it for the long haul like, even if he wasn't in the main cast list, I would think this is a character that's going to go to the end. Because this, this dude's going to do big things throughout the season. Um, I love he's got those two little dudes with him now um, that kind of do his dirty work. There's the guy where it's like, we got the focus on his pants and his shoes. And it reminded me of um, Hannah, Joe Wright's movie with Saoirse Ronan, when I... Um, Kate Blanchett had that henchman that just walked around in a uh, track suit and whistled with like a bat. <laughs> he reminds me of that guy. And then he's got um, he's got his little short sidekick where it's like it, it's like the Grover Dill to his Scott Fargus, if you will, <laughs> that these two are. Um, so I feel like they're um, they're gonna be fun to watch too as long as they stick around. Which I suppose they I guess they're kind of like. Um, Adam Goldberg and the deaf guy, and or the mute guy in the first season. Uh, so they, they may not last the whole time, but uh, I feel like when they do, they'll be, the, they'll be those side characters that we know so well in Coen Brothers movies, where even though they're just on the side and they really don't do a whole lot except exactly what they're supposed to, um, they still really stand out. 
Um, so, so I'm very interested to see what all kinds of havoc they wreak throughout this. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, um, that's more or less about what this episode was. Um, we're still getting some really good stuff. Uh, as I was saying uh, the last time, I really, really love what McGregor is doing. He's definitely kind of what, what, what I have my eye on the most, though. Even Stuhlbarg really, really, really got my attention with this episode. Um, I mean, he was always a nice presence, but I mean, he's like... The fact that his character is so in it now, I just love that. Um, but yeah, the way he was able... The way he's able to do those moments, like make a whole sincere scene where it's Ray and Emmett and nobody else. We're cutting back to Mary Elizabeth Winstead, but more or less there was nobody else in this scene when it was just him playing off a stand-in that he would ultimately take the place of. And being able to do that back and forth and make this believable scene, um, damn. Damn, he's good. <laughs> um... So yeah, I didn't do a whole lot, I didn't do any speculation in the first video. I was afraid that people would be mad about that because a lot of the times that's like the main point, doing videos like this. Um, I, I just thought it was too early, really. Like, we're on the first episode, we've got nine to go, and it's like, if you spend the whole time trying to predict what's going to happen and then seeing in the next episode if your predictions come true or not, it's kind of like, it, you'll be more focused on that than you will just letting the story do what it's going to do. Just let it unravel in front of your eyes without trying to necessarily be ahead of it. Though to make things, you know, a little more interesting, I will try to every now and then say, you know, like I said throughout this one, maybe maybe this will happen and maybe that could happen, or I hope this doesn't happen. Um, and maybe, once we get in, like, maybe the last few episodes or something, then I'll start, you know, saying, what if it ends this way or what if it ends this way? Um... But in the meantime, I feel like we can do that a little bit for the most part. Um, we should just see what happens. Uh, and let the unexpected be unexpected. So, um, yes, um, now that, after the second half of this episode, I am very, very excited to get to uh, the next weeks. So, um, until then, uh, let's see what happens.